Welcome back to the Imagine it Manufacturing Solutions blog. As always, I'm Mark Flayler, and today we're going to take a look at determining the internal volume of an empty container using Autodesk Inventor. Uh, the first method we're going to look at is a calculation method. It's very simple. It's perhaps the simplest way to find your internal volume of a container, and we're going to do this so with this little air box guy here. So we want to find how much volume is taking up by the inside of this box. First of all, we'll take a look at the eye properties of the air box. So we'll go to the physical tab. We'll record the volume. And I'll just quickly paste it into Excel here. So we have the volume of the solid before it's filled. Now we're going to start patching up the holes. So anywhere we don't want to have a volume measured, we want to block it out, we basically want to patch this up with some boundary patches. These are done one at a time, so I'm going to do this in five different boundary patches. And at the very top here, we want to figure out where the filling level is. I'm going to go ahead and select the top edges here. And notice when you do a boundary patch, you can't just skip right to an edge that's beyond where you're currently at, you have to make it contiguous. So let's just keep picking these edges here. Got a nice preview, and we'll make that a solid boundary. Now I'm going to go ahead and sculpt this, and it's a little hard to get those surfaces by themselves, so I'm just going to grab them here in my browser. I'm going to add the material up, and it will form a watertight solid boundary. So this is a representation of the air box as well as the volume that would fill it up had we put, let's say, a liquid in it or a gas. Look at the eye properties again. Just check the physical tab. Record our new volume. Go back over to Excel where I have a small calculation here. Just paste that right in and I have my volume. For, again, that's the simplest method to do this, but there are a lot neater ways. And there are ways that require you to use assemblies to do this, which, you know, previous to Inventor 2010, this is the way to do it. And this is also beneficial if you need to actually show the volume, not just find the calculated value. So here you see I have an assembly with the air box already placed into it. And I'm going to place another instance inside this assembly of an air box, but again, this one is then filled. So I have an empty one and a filled one. Now those don't line up, so I won't be able to do much with them. So I'm going to go to my eye properties of the second occurrence, the one I just placed in there. And on this tab here called occurrence, I can select the X, Y, and Z offsets to all be zero. Now, since this was saved from the original file, it's going to have the same origin, so it should sit right on top of each other. You can actually see the small little parting line there too, where you see a little bit of an overlap. Now, I could change the color of the internal one so I could see a difference. Um, it, do it really doesn't matter at this point though. I'm going to jump over to another part file that I have open already. I'm going to finish out of the sketch that I'm currently in. And actually I don't even need that sketch. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Go up here to manage and start the derive command. And essentially what this will do is derive in that assembly that we have created there. And I can perform an operation on it as I bring it in. Now I can include or exclude or subtract geometry. I can create a boundary box or a intersection. In this case, I'm going to subtract the volume of the air box. So it's going to leave just the filled geometry left over. So here I have a visual representation of the actual volume that would fill the air box. And since this is a part file by itself, it does have its own physical properties too. So I can check my eye properties, update, record the volume. Now if you take a look at the volume I had calculated before, you can see that this is a little bit off. This is 0 0.01 millimeters off. Uh, that value you could probably consider negligible or cons you could uh, look at it as a calculated round off error. Lastly, my favorite way of doing this is using Inventor 2010 and using some of the multi-body tools. 
So in this case, I'm back to that original file I had for the calculation, but it's just named uh, airbox-stitch now instead. I have my sculpt already in here, and I'm going to use this copy object command. What this is going to allow me to do is copy the entire body that exists in the file as a composite or a surface. I really like using composite because it's a little bit more lightweight. Now if I choose the stitch command, this will take a composite, a solid um, internal uh, set of surfaces and combine them into a solid. So you can see stitch surface number two. And you can also see it's created a brand new solid for me. And this is part of the multi-body solids techniques. So I have solid one and solid three here. I'm going to suppress my sculpt and that's going to actually allow me to see my parting line there. And I'm going to use the combine tool, which is also a new multi-body tool to Inventor 2010. I'm going to choose one body as the base and another body is the tool body. And the tool body you can think of is what I use to cut away from the other piece of geometry, the base geometry. So I'm going to cut away the initial air box. And again, this leaves me with a visual representation of the void geometry. So I check my physical tab here again. I can see my volume is equal to that of the one I did with the assembly and the derive. And what's great about this is this is all manageable inside of just one part file. I didn't have to create an assembly and then derive it in. Um, I was able to manage this just with a single file.